I'm working on my daughter's 2012 Kia Optima and uh, the rear speakers here and the door are blown so we're gonna replace them with the Sony XSR 1646 6.5 speakers so let's go ahead and get this torn apart so we're gonna get this torn apart and what you've got is you've got this little little tab right here you want to try to fish it out the best you can almost there it goes just let that so there's a Phillips screw behind it and then down here it's a little tricky to do with a camera in your way pop this out looks like we've got a Phillips screw there so let's go ahead and get those out Okay, next we want to go to the bottom of the door panel here should be held in by just some push tabs so we want to find those tabs Now up here, it sits in a little groove. So what you want to do is lightly angle out and lift up. So on these, when you get the door panel pulled off, back here, right here where my finger is, there's a little push tab. You just simply push it down and the clip comes right off. Then you've got a wiring harness down here. You just push the button, pull it out. And we'll switch to the other camera so I can do that. Push down, pull out. Set the door panel aside somewhere where it's not going to get hurt. On the door, you've got this little wiring harness right here. Just push that little tab down, where it slides right out. Felt screws, hold it in. Okay, you hear that? I don't know if you can or not. Hear how it's grindy? The cone looks like it's been wet. Hear that? Look at that. How it's discolored and it's kind of rippled down here. Let's see if you can hear it up here. Grab one of these new speakers. Hear how silent that is? Let me grab a paint marker. Or a permanent marker, that's all we got. I don't know where my white paint marker is. I'm 
do one here too, just for giggles. Let's start with those three and then we'll drill the others later. Now I'm gonna start out pretty small with my drill bits. That way I don't go too big right out of the gate. solid fit. It's going to work perfect. Okay, I got to grab a bigger drill bit. I'm going to go ahead and pull the speaker back out. But I'm going to drill a hole down here so that I can feed my wire from the speaker out. And then I'm going to put the factory connector back on it if I can. That way I can just plug them in. So let me pull the speaker back out and we'll drill that hole. Because there's a lip inside of here, there's also a cable here for the window. I want to make sure I missed that. So the cable is about right here, and then the track for the window is right here. So I think what I'm going to do just to be safe, and so that my wires aren't in the way of anything, I'm going to drill my hole. I'm gonna drill my whole way down here. Right here. That feels good. Alright. Let's see what kind of damage we have here. Looking at the speaker, it is labeled on the back. There's a plus right here. So the yellow wire is your positive, and this black wire is your ground. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the wire. I don't have to leave anything because I'm never going to use this speaker again, but I want to leave just enough in case I get distracted and have to come back later. I can look and reference that the yellow wire was the positive. Only reason I'm leaving a little bit of wire. And it doesn't look like this clip, it doesn't look like it pushes out, and it doesn't look like this tab down here will release anything. So I'm just going to have to take a screwdriver and pry it out. Can you move? figure out what I did with my screwdriver. That's all right, I'll just use this one. So I'm gonna get up underneath of the back here and I'm just gonna gently pry up because I don't wanna break the front of this tab. If I break it, I can't use it. Yeah. So it was glued in. So there was no way for me to get it out by like a release tab. I don't have to clean this up. 
I don't know why I'm trying. Eh. Hey, hey. Okay. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to splice. Cut the ends of these off. All right. Right there looks good. One. Two. You've seen me in previous videos using this resin, rosin paste flux. What it's good for is um, it helps with uh, spreading the solder. So when you heat the wire up, it melts this resin, and turns it into a liquid, and it pushes the solder through the wire, all the way through the wire, not just the outside. You'll see a lot of times if you, if you try to do this yourself and you don't have this resin or a resin core solder, you're heating the wire up and all you're doing is spreading, you're spreading the solder around the outside of the wire but it, it's still weak on the inside because you don't have good transfer, uh, you don't have good flow through. So putting this flux on there, you'll see when I touch the soldering iron to it, it'll just, it, it takes all the work out of it. You literally just touch it and it does the work for you. It's really simple. With a little practice, anybody can solder. People are scared of doing it sometimes. and It's just because they, they didn't have anybody show them the, the easy way. And you can get that stuff on Amazon. It's really cheap. And that's what it is. So I like to do it on this side too. You don't need a whole lot on there. Just a good coating. There's a lot on that one. That's a little too much, but it's not going to hurt anything. So what we're looking for on these wires that came with the speakers is one has the black the black stripe on it. That's going to be your negative wire. And this solid colored one that generally has writing on it, like I know this one does, it has writing on it right here. That one's going to be the positive. So since we looked at the old speaker, we know that this yellow wire is a positive. We're going to hook this solid wire to this yellow wire. That'll be our positive and then the other ones are negative. So let me get some heat shrink tubing on here. I'll go ahead and color code them just to help us help later down the road. Now the heat shrink tubing that I'm using right now is a little bit big for the wire, the gauge wire that I'm soldering. It'll be a little loose, but I'll put a little piece of tape or something around it just to make sure that it doesn't ever pull apart later on. I don't have any of the smaller stuff right now. I need to order some, so I'm just making do with what I got. This will this will be fine for what I'm doing. So what I like to do here is I separate each all these little strands of wires. And I'll do it on this side too. Separate them. Separate the other one. And I haven't done this one yet. Sorry, I'm a little high. In. So there we got them separated. So this is my positive. The yellow is my positive. So what I like to do here, now that they're all separated, you just kind of push them together like you're interlacing your fingers together. And then you pinch each side and give it a, a few twists. That way when it's done, it kind of looks like that. Like one solid run of wire. You know, you don't want to, you'll see it a lot of times people will do this and they'll twist them together and that just creates a big ball. And I think it looks sloppy. If the person would just slow down and try to do a good job. Especially if you want to do this and make a little extra side money off of it. Ooh, my hands are shaking. So now I've got the initial one. I'm going to come to the bottom. Heat that wire up. It'll really help with the transfer. So 
you see what we end up with if you spin that around it's solid all the way through and that will never come apart so I'm gonna do this other one real quick Bottom side, well, we get good transfer. Turn the tip off, and I'll shut that off. Let it cool down. That's what we end up with. This one was a little sloppy, but it's all the way through, and them will never come apart ever. my heat gun I've got it set up for 315 degrees and that will just melt that heat shrink I won't have to put tape around it. It's pretty solid. Yeah. That one's a little loose. That one's okay, though. I think I'm just going to leave it the way it is. Alright. So. There's my wiring. Super simple. Okay, Let's get this side buttoned up. I drilled. I'm going to pull the excess out, out of the door, so it never gets caught up. When you're tightening your screws up in this plastic, remember that it is just plastic. You don't have to put a whole lot of torque on them. Bring them down snug and give them just a little bit more, but not much. You'll strip them out, then you have to find a bigger screw, and it's just a, a nightmare. And also, make sure your screws aren't too long where they stick out in front of the, where the window's going to come down on the track. Because the last thing you want is that tip of that screw to go up your window and scratch your glass or rip your window tent. And always, when you get the old speaker out, stop. Take a look around, don't get in a hurry. Make sure there's no wires on the back side, no cables coming down, you're not drilling through a metal frame that is the track for the window. Just take your time, do it right the first time. Because you don't want to get into a window or messing up the motor or cutting a wire, and causing yourself a couple hundred dollars worth of damage. It's not worth it. And it is not fun. Now what I can do is put a zip tie here and here. It'll look really nice. So let's do that now. Thank you. 
There we go. All we got left on this side is to put the panel back on. Move on to the next side. I'm just going around making sure all of them are clipped the way they're supposed to be. That side's done. I'll go ahead and show you doing the other side too, but I won't do much talking and I won't really be showing you anything. I'll just kind of time lapse it and let you see the process.